Welcome back to Station Rigs. Today is a special episode. We're in West Wyland. We're taking a look at their ladder. It's a 105 foot 2018 ladder. Let's take a look. Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Today we are in West Whiteland. We are doing a Station Rigs tour of West Whiteland's ladder. This is a 2018 Spartan. Got a lot of cool features. Let's take a look. We're going to start from the front and we're going to work our way around. This 2018 is made by Spartan. Spartan is an awesome company. They really like them. Their engines are Spartans. Uh, their ladder is a Spartan. They actually started a trend here in Chester County. You're going to see other fire companies that have these Spartans. Part of that reason is because they've had reliability with these trucks. They also have the service with these trucks. So if something goes wrong, something breaks for some reason, call them up, they come right down, they take care of it. Let's start going in right from the driver's seat and see what they have inside. So getting up into the driver's seat, the first thing I noticed, the old buttons that we used to have, uh, turning on all your lights, sirens, and all that kind of stuff, no longer has. It's actually a computer run system. You got a module here that controls all your lights, controls your sirens, uh, it actually has a feature in there that actually you can tell what doors are open. So the safety of this vehicle is key and you know having a centralized computer really streamlines everything. It looks awesome in here. I noticed as I'm looking around it actually has an AM FM stereo. So you know when we look at fire trucks many of them don't have any kind of radios but when you're coming back from a fire call maybe even going to a fire call listening to a radio getting pumped up getting ready to go it's kind of fun. So in the state of Pennsylvania, it is not required for volunteer EMS services or fire services to have CDLs. However, West Whiteland decides, you know, it's best to, if you're going to be driving a vehicle this large, to have that education. Know how air brakes work, how the function of a fully loaded tank is going to react to a vehicle. So having a CDL is very important for these guys. It helps cut back on the liability, but it also improves the safety. Uh, so if you want to volunteer down here and you want to learn how to drive one of these, not only can you do that, but they're going to actually send you to the course. They'll help pay for it and get you going. They provide the education and set up the class to do it, and then they actually set up to take the test. So come on down, see what they can do for you. We make our way from the driver's seat into the back where all the fire guys are going to be. So it's a pretty good step to get up in here, but plenty of room to get in. Take your seat, put your gear on, and get ready to go. Okay, inside the cab here, this is a six-man cab. It has all the safety seats, has the integrated... Uh, seats for your air packs so you don't have to store those in different areas you put those on get ready for the call has all your lights your radios but the one thing that i noticed i started back in 1994 when we had open cabs and even the newer cabs that weren't open they were very loud we had to use headsets in order to go to the calls to help save on our hearing uh, this cab doesn't have that spartan makes such a product that you know you close the windows and you're driving down the road you can hear each other talk you don't have to worry about hearing protection uh, and that's all to do the design of this kind of ladder. So as I'm making my way out of the uh, crew cab, I notice their set of irons and their poles are right here. You want easy access to these. You don't want to be digging around in a cabinet. When it's rolling and you're coming up, you need to have quick access. One thing I was told when I started this tour and talking to these guys is that, uh, you know, they got the truck and they needed to mount their tools. So they actually did it all in-house. The special thing about that is they can actually take the time, figure out what tools they use, where it goes, and the best place to pull them. As I make my way around, we are got to go around these uh, rig outriggers. I noticed that they have some tape on this, and the reason for that is because this tower is designed that you can go out 18 feet or you can bring them in and still have full 100% capability of putting that tower up. So they took the time to actually mark out where it needs to be so the guy on the turret or whoever's putting these riggers out know exactly where it needs to be so it can be 100% functional. So right over the outrigger, we have a cabinet here that has uh, your scene lights that you might need inside a building. So these are actually pretty unique because they can actually be battery powered or you can plug them in and they can hang on doors, you can put them on the ground, whatever you need to be to get the light where you need it. You know, working in a fire scene, it can be dark, smoky, all kinds of other stuff. Having a light available, having a quick access like this is key. The very next cabinet we have in the roll-up door is going to be uh, some of their rescue stuff and some of their overhaul. In here you got a short ladder, maybe get up in an attic or pull a ceiling. You have your Stokes basket, you have some backboards for some rescue. You have your air ejectors or your fans. And these ones too, they're no longer gas powered like we used to do back in the days. These are actually either they're electric, but you can use them battery powered or plug it in. Here there's a bunch of other equipment. They got a confined space bag, so they got their helmets and safety equipment for that. There's a lot of little things in here. They're using it to the fullest extent. So we got another roll-up cabinet right behind that. Let's see what's inside. 
Okay, inside here, it looks like we got a couple hoses to go to your hydrants or cook up to another engine or a tanker. You got an air pack for your driver if it needs to be because they don't have one in the driver's seat. And all your fuses and switches, everything that you need to hook up. We'll keep working our way back towards the back of the truck here. And what do we have? We have all your hand tools. Dude, look how easy this thing is mounted. You can adjust this if you get a different set of tools. You got your irons, you got your ash, you got your sledge, everything you need. Right below that here, the little door panel, you got your fire extinguishers. It looks like they got uh, an ABC and a water extinguisher. Continuing to work our way back, we got another roll-up cabinet. One thing I noticed is roll-up cabinets are so easy. It's pretty much one hand use. They go up, you don't have to pull them out in front of traffic or anything like that, they go right up. This is their RIT cabinet. So they have their air bottle, they got an extra mask, they got their rope bags, they got all the harnesses, everything ready to go, because this will run RIT with their rescue. So if they're doing a mutual aid or they're coming in, they can run RIT right out of this truck. Right underneath the RIT pack here is actually a cabinet for their extra air. You know, these are 45 minute bottles, but depending on how fit you are, you could be going through that in 20 minutes, 25, maybe 30 minutes. Uh, so having extra air bottles, using all the space, pretty much in between the wheels, using that space to store your equipment. What an awesome way to do that. Next cabinet we got is another roll up, and this is where all the saws are. This drawer is actually pretty cool because it pulls out. It's, you know, high on me. You know, I'm five foot 11, and it falls out. It comes out next to you nice and sturdy, ain't going anywhere. You got your fuels, you got your little bottles to, uh, for your oil. Everything is right here, ready to go. Look how clean this thing is. This almost looks like a brand new truck. It's a 2018, guys. These guys make sure their equipment is ready to go. Underneath the chainsaws here, we actually have another storage area for air bottles. It's got three more air bottles. So that's a total of one, two, three, four, five. That's pretty much your whole crew already have spare air bottles ready to go. Uh, the final uh, door on this side is gonna be where their cutoff tools are. These are set up to do either masonry or steel, and they actually have a unique one here. You know, going inside, we don't want to bring all the gas-powered stuff because of all the exhaust and everything like that. This is actually an electric cutoff saw, and this thing boosts right up, does what you need to do, stops real quick. I need one of these for my garage. So up on the platform, you got a 105-foot ladder. At that, on that platform, you have a couple of different things. You have your control box that can put that ladder up, swing it side to side. You have communications from the bottom to the tip. And you also have a bucket here that actually carries some of your equipment, such as your chimney cleaning equipment and fire suppression stuff. You have tools up at the top of the ladder. As that ladder goes up, you also have lights that tell you at night how far you're extending. Once it reaches max extension, uh, they change to a blue. So you can control that from down below or you can go all the way up top. The water, once you start flowing it, you can control it from the platform or you can control that from up top too. As you bring it back in though, you know one of the special features that this has is actually an avoidance. So you know when it's getting close to the truck, where it is, and it'll tell you how close you are. Kind of like a backup alarm in your vehicles. Coming down off the platform, we're making our way to the back of the vehicle. This is actually pretty cool too because they thought of all the safety features. In these two little compartments on either side is actually where you put out the outriggers. And you know, we work with a minimum amount of crew, so a lot of times we're gonna try to maximize our speed, but doing safety, I can't physically get to both sides of these without getting to the side, looking at where those rigs are, making sure they're set right. So very special feature. Uh, Spartan does a good job of that. Wes Whiteland decided that's a great thing to have. I can't blame him. Inside this last compartment, is uh, where a lot of the business is gonna take place because this is where all the ladders are stored. You also have some extra pipe poles and stuff like that. They have 35 foot extension ladders, 24 foot extension ladders, 16 foot roof ladders. These roof ladders are actually pretty unique because not only do they have the hooks on, the, on one side, they actually have them on both sides. Why did it take us this long to figure that out? I remember trying to get up on a roof, putting a ladder up with the hooks and it's on the wrong side. Now I'm trying to flip it or roll it or whatever. Uh, they actually put them on both sides. Way to think ahead of the game. They also have up here the rest of their tools. Uh, they got their pipe poles, they got their picks. They also have an attic ladder here. Those attic ladders collapse nice and small, get it into a small area, maybe in a bedroom closet where the attic is, get up in there. This actually space was actually measured out and uh, designed specifically for these size ladders uh, to fit in here. And look how clean and, and easy it is to put these in and out. You have no questions whether the 24 foot goes here or a 35 foot goes there because they labeled them. Closing up the ladders here, I noticed that the, here's where the inlet is on the back of the truck. So this is a 
dry aerial or ladder and so you need a, a water supply whether you go right to a hydrant or you get another truck or an engine that supply it this is where it's going to go in making our way around i noticed that they have ladders to get up to the platform on both sides so if you're in a tight area or you got something on the other side you can come up on this side also we're working our way up from the passenger side this is the back compartment here this is where a lot of their electrical cords are you know many of the things are going from electric or from gas to electric so having plenty of cords and distance to cover that they have that covered they got the regular set of toolbox here it's got uh, uh, electrical meter in there so you know if you got the power coming to it or not making sure that you're safe they also have a bunch of sawzalls they got at least two here these are all electric powered sawzalls so if you need to do some cutting inside or on a car or whatever they need it for it's here ready to go make our way around the uh, other outrigger here we open up the next compartment and it looks like electric power hearse tool so this can actually be used for a rescue. If for some reason the rescue didn't make it or you were first on scene or you need an extra set of hands, you have an electric power uh, hearse tool. You know, most of the public will know this is the jaws of life. The fact that it's uh, battery powered, it's pretty cool. We're continuing to work our way forward and I notice even more air ballast storage here. You know, fires can go on for a long time and depending on your physical fitness, you can be going through an air bottle every 20 minutes. So if you got a, you know, fire that's going to last a couple hours, you need to have that. And this truck actually has that stored. Here's where they have a lot of their mats or tarps here. They like to keep things clean too. You know, if you have a chimney fire and, you know, you don't want you tracking these dirty firemen in and out of your house, they're going to throw down a tarp down in your hallway. Make sure that they keep your stuff clean. So, you know, kudos on them on having plenty of tarps to make sure that you as a public and uh, everything stays clean. The tarps can also be used to uh, put out tools. So if you're on the scene and you've got a bunch of tools you're going to be pulling off, put the tarp down, put all your tools on top of it. This is another compartment that got a bunch of tools in it. Again, this blows my mind. They actually thought of it because tools change from year to year. Tools break and they're not the same size. They actually designed a system or use a system that uh, you can have this adjustable. So if you have a big cutter versus a small cutter, you can move that around. Uh, and not have to worry about redesigning a whole truck because of the one tool you decided to buy when you got the truck. Moving forward, the next cabinet that we have here is going to be where the chimney can is stored. So you want to catch all those ashes and stuff like that. But in this, they actually have a uh, video scope to look behind the walls. Back in the day, we used to actually poke a pretty big hole, maybe use a mirror to check that out. But now you can just put a smaller hole, make sure that there's no fire behind the wall. Awesome thing to have. The technology that are on these trucks today is are far surpassed anything that we used to have. And uh, having cameras like this, whether it's a tick camera or whether it's a video camera to see where things are, makes their job easier and actually makes it safer. Speaking of safety, we have some uh, cribbing here. This cribbing can be used for an auto accident if need be, but it also can be used for these outriggers that we're looking at that we have to walk around. So if you're on uneven ground and you need to crib that up to make sure it's level, that's what this is here for. This final compartment on this thing is actually the front of the other one, or the, the walkthrough side. So this is, again, where the Stokes was. You got a, a little giant. You got some more smoke ejectors and fans. They use pretty much every inch of space on this truck. You know, me coming off here, I don't belong to West Wildland Fire Company, but you know, within a day or two, if I walked around this truck enough times, I'd pretty much have a good idea where all the equipment is. Excellent job. These cabinets here are identical to the other side that we talked about. I don't need to open them up. It's got your lights, it's got your reels, it's got your pipe poles and stuff like that. Having a mirror side to side, doesn't matter what side you get out of, you know where the equipment's going to be. Jumping into the passenger side vehicle, this is where your officer is going to ride. Uh, underneath here, before I get up, there actually is a uh, small little cabinet here where you got your elevator keys, you've got your hazmat book, you've got some of your safety equipment to protect yourself. Again, they're using every little space on this truck in order to uh, supply their guys with what they need. As we get up into the cab here, first things I notice is they actually have a tick camera ready to go. So if they need to look for guys, you know, for a rescue or they need to look for fire, this camera is ready to go right next to the, to the uh, officer here. Here in Chester County, they actually use NDC system, mobile data computer that tells them not only where the fire call is, maybe if there's people trapped, uh, what kind of fire call it is, but they also use this as an AVL system. So what that means is the closest vehicle goes. So if they need a, a ladder, you know, in the next township over and you're coming back from a call, you may get called out to that. It also changes the, you know, the response times uh, for this because here in West Whiteland, they actually have Route 30, Route 100. 
they can access these pretty quickly. So they can get up to speed, maybe get out a little bit further, uh, and the AVL is going to pick that up. It's not necessarily the closest house, but the quickest way to get there. But thank you for watching another episode of Station Rigs. This is Wes Whiteland, Exton area. Uh, if you are interested in taking a look at this personally, come on down. Talk to the guys. They'll be more than happy to bring it out, show you what's going on. Do me a favor once again. We're trying to build this program. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification. Look forward to the next video.